who tweets, we need more at Richard Grinnell's, who's the ambassador to Germany, is that right? Yeah. Now, were the, was the allegation that you were bad-mouthing President Trump true? No. Was the allegation that you had created a do not prosecute list to give to the prosecutor general in Ukraine true? No. In fact, didn't the corrupt prosecutor general himself later recant those allegations? Yes. So let me see if I get this right. You were one of the most senior diplomats in the State Department. You've been there for 33 years. You've won numerous awards. You've been appointed as an ambassador three times by both Republican and Democratic presidents. And the State Department would not issue a statement in support of you against false allegations because they were concerned about a tweet from the President of the United States? That's my understanding. ...of these tweets at the time? Yes. What was your reaction to seeing this? As we sit here testifying, the President is attacking you on Twitter. Um, and I'd like to give you a chance to respond. I'll read part of one of his tweets. Everywhere Marie Ivanovich went turned bad. She started off in Somalia. How did that go? Uh, he goes on to say, uh, later in the tweet, is a U.S. president's absolute right to appoint ambassadors. First of all, uh, Ambassador Ivanovich, the Senate has a chance to confirm or deny an ambassador, do they not? Yes, advise and consent. But would you like to respond to the president's attack that everywhere you went turned bad? Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think I have such powers, uh, not in Mogadishu, Somalia, Somalia, not in other places. I actually think that um, where I've served over the years, um, I and others have demonstrably um, made things better, you know, for the U.S. as well as for the countries uh, that I've served in. Uh, Ukraine, for example, where there are huge challenges, including, you know, on the issue that we're discussing today of, of corruption huge challenges, but they've made a lot of progress since 2014, including in the years that I was there. And I think in part, uh, I mean, the Ukrainian people get the most, um, the most credit for that, but a part of that credit goes to the work of the United States and, um, and to me as the ambassador in, in, the United, uh, in Ukraine. Ambassador, um, you've shown the courage to come forward today and testify notwithstanding the fact you were urged by the White House or State Department not to, notwithstanding the fact that, as you testified earlier, the President implicitly threatened you in that call record, and now the President in real time is attacking you, what effect do you think that has on other witnesses' willingness to come forward and expose wrongdoing? Well, uh, it's very intimidating. It's a dy designed to intimidate, is it not? I, I mean, I can't speak to what the president is trying to do, but I think the effect is to be intimidating. I'll let you know, Ambassador, that some of us here take witness intimidation very, very seriously.